Hi, Jamie here at The Hebs Teacher. Today we're going over developing good financial habits. This is a vital step towards setting and achieving your financial goals. You want to be able to set these goals and to achieve them and to develop and grow good financial habits that will help you in attaining them. Get into the habit of limiting and keeping track of your money. This will help you gain a better control over how you incur expenses. Ultimately, you will achieve your financial goals of saving more every month. Embarking on more specific goal setting can be a great way to develop and build more sensible financial habits. In the long term, your everyday good financial habits will help improve your personal finance. Now, here, I want to give you some great steps to take in order to develop these good financial habits. Step number one. Pick one category of expenses to track. One of the most essential aspects of personal finance is expense budgeting. But to wake up suddenly and start keeping records of your expenses is not the best way forward unless you develop the habit of making and keeping a budget. So what you should do is pick one area like groceries and start keeping track on what you are spending. When you focus on this one area you'll be able to spot those unnecessary expenses you're making. Subsequently you will adopt more practical steps to eliminate your unnecessary spending. Using the example of groceries or food, you can start writing down purchases of the snacks, meals or other food items. Add up the cost of these items weekly or on a daily basis. Then you can look out for telltale signs such as spending more money on snacks than you should. And they all start to add up. There are some good apps out there that are quite helpful for tracking expenses. Step number two, set specific rules that should govern your purchases. In developing good financial habits that will ultimately lead to greater financial goal setting, you should set rules that will govern your purchases. This is especially true if you're battling with unnecessary spending. You can curb and eventually overcome the spending by setting specific shopping rules that involve spending less. For example, before setting out to go shopping, set a spending limit at home. Make a list of what you need to get and stick to that list. Don't get extras, don't see something else there, don't go there when you're hungry because that's the worst. And if possible pay cash so that you will be able to stick to this limit. Practice this for four, five, six months and master the habit. Step number three, check your bank account balances daily. Another great way to develop good financial habits in order to ultimately set financial goals and achieve them is to ensure you check your account balances with your bank on a daily basis. This financial habit is a great way to keep an eye on your spending and spot where you're incurring these unnecessary expenses you will learn to, to become increasingly aware of your finances by adopting the habit of checking your bank account balances regularly. And look back at some of the older ones and see, what was that for? I don't remember that. Oh, that's a large amount. What was that for? Indeed, developing daily good financial habits is a step towards setting and achieving your bigger 
financial goals. However, remember to keep one specific goal in mind at a time. Then, a little further on, you can look at another goal or aspect when you've mastered the first. Step number four, pay yourself first. As I've written in my blogs, read the book by George Samuel Clayton, The Richest Man in Babylon. He suggests paying yourself first before you pay any bills. Put this money into something safe like gold or silver. I will discuss this in, in another video. Or into a savings account or short-term short investment that may be making you a little interest or at least not losing on your money. He discusses the benefits of this and also the challenges you may be faced with and how to overcome them. Now, step number five. If you have to borrow, then maybe you just can't afford it. And this includes credit cards. What I was talking about in my last video. Credit and loans are pretty awesome if you're buying something big like a house or starting a, a starting a business, a big business. Not many people have two hundred thousand dollars or more available to do this. So taking a mortgage or a loan makes sense. But there are maybe better ways to do this than just rushing into a bank or to a company and taking the first option given to you. You know, you get the money, yes, I've got that, thank you, and you're off. Check out Robert Kiyosaki's books, which the first one is The Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and the number of other books that are in this series. Robert and his wife Kim and their team have many books that cover a different strategy to buying and financing property. From your first investment through to your hundredth or more. I truly wish I had read their books before we bought our first property. I tell you, I did everything they said not to do. I tell you, what a financially uneducated idiot I was. With this topic, I think I will always be learning. As we, as we all should. There are lots, are lots of more areas to look at to get into good financial habits like buying value, not the cheapest, that can be shoddy or, or the most expensive. Look for value, shop around, do your research before buying. And do, do you really need it? Learn to say no to yourself and to your children. Most of us always want something and, you know, these things tend to get more expensive as we get older. There are a few ways to do this, like, let's wait until tomorrow and see if we still want it. Or maybe we can get it at a better price on the internet or from the shop downtown. Putting things off with your children has important implications for their financial education and their attitude towards money. I'll be going over this in follow-up videos. Now, although sometimes it's not easy, it's an important lesson they need to grasp in preparation for adult life. Because, you know, we're not taught this at school or any other type of formal education. And do we need that new car every few years? The longer you drive it after you've paid it off, the less your auto expenses will be. Reliable transport doesn't mean you need to have a new car every two years. One important area I've learned in my financial education is the part about putting others' needs before my own. That is, giving to others. This may be a financial donation or a tip or donating of your time to charity or to a cause, or cooking a meal for a friend in need. 
It is always easy to put your own worries and problems at the forefront of our minds. But when we start focusing on others, the payback is unmeasurable. True financial abundance has nothing to do with how much money you have. And being rich is not evil. Most people who are rich are the most generous people in the world. Google anyone you think is rich and nine times out of ten their lists of charities and projects they have donated to and the amount they gave will truly astound you. Now, I hope this has given you some ideas and creating good financial habits. The more we learn through reading, courses or podcasts, whatever is better for you, know that the more you educate yourself, the better your life and finances will be. I found this. The more I learn, the more I want to learn. The more that has been covered up, the more I want to be able to share with you. The biggest investment you can make is in your education. And there has never been a better time to educate yourself now with the resources that are available to you. If you think you're that type of person who's not influenced by all the propaganda thrown at us today and from the past, if you are open-minded and want to look at a, a different, fully researched perspective on history and economics, then I suggest you check out the revised Uncle Eric series by Richard J. Maybury. And in there, he talks about the two basic rules of the common law of old. Number one, do all you have agreed to do. And two, do not encroach on other persons or their property. Please, don't keep this a secret. Subscribe, like, share this with your friends and family. We have to hedge our own future. If we don't look after ourselves, no one else will. Until next time, this is Jamie at The Hedge Teacher. Thank you.